y puedas. Frank Vite. Berthe Brack. Hugh Brown. Dory Dixon. Bobby Ferguson. Campbell Forsyre. Rory Hamilton. Andy King. Jim McFadden. Jackie McGrory. Brian McElroy. Jackie McAnally. Tommy McLean. Frank Malone. Joe Mason. Eric Murray. Pat O'Connor. Davey Sneddon. Mark Watson. Don't forget the manager, Wally Waddle, trainer Walter McRae, and assistant trainer, John Murdoch. <laughs> Thanks to each and every one of them. Com committee member, John Livingston, will now make the presentation. Three of the four 1964-65 players are coming onto the stage to represent the squad. Firstly, the youngest of them all, winger Tommy McLean. Yeah. Secondly, our top league goal scorer that season, Ronnie Hamilton. And last, but the good news least, right back, Andy King. to accept their award on behalf of the squad, the next chairman of the command of football club and a third of nice lovely gentleman as well, Ronnie Hamilton and the rest of the squad for 1964-65. I'm sure you'd like to hear we put these, uh, some questions to these guys, ladies and gentlemen. Tommy, you're the youngest. Still look the youngest. Age, age 17. What was it like for you? Well, obviously, uh, me being the youngest, it was, uh, I've had a good career in Scottish football, and I think it emanates for uh, uh, my start the Kilmarnock Football Club because I was lucky and fortunate to play with a lot of these talented players uh, and they weren't along and letting me know if I did something wrong. Uh, but the other good thing was that uh, when somebody tried to kick me, I had wee Andy and Eric Murray and they met beside me, so they sort of the other guys out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I was delighted. It was a great time, you know, early on, obviously, winning the league was a big thing, you know. And the other thing that sticks out is the Eintracht game, that was my, my debut in that season. <laughs> so, I've left Kilmarnock Football Club for a wee while, but Kilmarnock Football Club will never leave me, I can assure you. Yeah. <laughs> Forward. He's a little or two always can the mic. <laughs> you were the second youngest in the squad and the top goal scorer. But how did you feel at the time you missed out in the last couple of games? Well I think you have to look at it positively. I would have to think that 
for 28 games of the 34 game season, I managed to stay in the team, score a few goals, and it was a privilege to play with so many fine players that were at Kilmarnock at that time. By the time that come came to the last three, four games, I'd lost four, and I was dropped. And that's the way it works. <laughs> Got to be cool to the team, you know. Good Paul Andy. Andy doesn't say much. He really doesn't he? You're ordered the right. Andy, you're a bit of a mercenary in your day. What was the bonus payment like? <laughs> you want to leave? 65. I want the truth, I want the goes on the truth. You can hold it. No, you hold it. Alright, I'll hold it. 250 pounds hey! less tax. <laughs> and we have to fight for everything we want. <laughs> End of day. Some things will not change, eh? <laughs> Ten pound I understand it's ten pound per win. They were the days, eh? Who's he gentlemen? The 64, 65. Yeah. 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 Steps in. I'd just like to hand you back now to Robbie. Yeah. After the next stage, I'm going to carry it away myself now. It's not only players we are needed to make a football club great. Our next inductee is a man who spent 34 years at the club from 1968 until 2002. And he also found the time to attend 270 Scottish international matches. Becoming known with Scott to work at six World Cup finals. I now ask committee member Stuart Murphy to make the presentation to Commander Scotland Physio and the Air, Hugh Allen, MBE. Scotland international squad. Any memories from that time as well, Hugh? Scotland? I, I think possibly the, the win against Czechoslovakia to qualify for the 74. Yeah. With a complete spell before that. And uh, it was just good to get through that night and uh, we did quite well. And we didn't qualify. But we did What's the main change to you in the treatment of players in your day until uh, how they get treated nowadays? Well, there's been a fantastic change. I mean, uh, when I started, we didn't have the facilities of uh, state-of-the-art gymnasiums and so on, where you know uh, fitness can be monitored much uh, more accurately. All our work was done uh, in rehab outside 
running up terracing, round tracks, uh, round the track, and and so on. So uh, apart from that, uh, it's, it's I've always maintained if you had a a serious ligament injury, it took six weeks to heal, no matter what sort of treatment uh, you uh, applied. So a lot hasn't really moved on from that point of view. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, another lovely recipient, a thorough gentleman, Hugh Allen. Our final 2014 inductee will, no, will need no little introduction, as he's been hanging around Rugby Park since the early 70s. A consistent left back, his first league match for the club, ended in a 2 win, win over Rangers. And he went on to play 481 league matches for the club. After retiring from the playing side, he joined the youth setup, tasked with bringing through a stream of young talent. Committee member Jim Wilson will now make the presentation to a man who certainly deserves to be called Mr. Kilmarnock, ladies and gentlemen, Alan Robertson. Alan, when you arrived here as a youngster in the seventies, did you ever think you'd be here forty years later? Uh, no, certainly not. And I'm sure my wife didn't think I would be either. Uh, no, at that stage, it would be in the team that I'd supported since I was a young boy. It was just a, a great privilege to have actually been signed, and my major concern was making sure I didn't get a free transfer at the end of the season. <laughs> Alan, who were the best players you played with during that period? Uh, there were so many players who, uh, obviously the length of time that I played, there was a lot of players. Um, but amongst them all, I think I would have to go for Ian McCulloch, who played with for a long time. There was obviously a lot of older people here tonight. Uh, no, Ian had, he had a great amount of ability but he also had a, a great desire to win and a great work ethic and he always played for the team and he, he did really well for us. Uh, I would also mention Tommy McLean because although uh, uh, I never actually played with Tommy but I played against him and actually my first game was against him and I'm sure I would rather have played with him than against him. <laughs> We've also brought a lot, of, a lot of young players through the youth set up and over the years as well. Who would you say was the, the best of that young bunch? It's a really difficult question. Obviously there's been a number of players who have gone on to uh, very great things like uh, Stephen Naismith and Chris Boyd. But I think really I take a lot of satisfaction and obviously there was a lot of people other than myself who contributed to these boys coming through the ranks. But when you see the likes of uh, Gary Hay and James Fowler, who yeah. gave such sterling service to the club uh, after coming through the youth ranks, you know, I think that's very pleasing. And also, uh, other players, when you've been around as long as I have, you actually see them coming back and people like Craig Sampson and Chris Boyd. Who, they were originally young boys who came through and then they come back as men and men who have achieved a great deal and just, but they're still very grounded people. Uh, that says a lot for them as well. So. 
Ladies and gentlemen, another Jed from another lovely recipient of award tonight, Alan Robertson. He just passes back to Robbie. He's going to conduct the auction, I believe. Thank you very much, and uh, probably our future recipient, Mr. Raymond Montgomery. Thank you very much. <laughs>